1967, the Minnesota Vikings selected Alan Page in the first round of the college draft. But his transition to the NFL was not an easy one. When he first came to the Minnesota Vikings, we thought he was a little strange. He had his own ways, and, and uh, he, was, he seemed stubborn, you know. We knew he had a lot of talent, but he didn't seem like he was going to fit with the group. Allen was sort of a loner type, as I recall. Out of practice, it seems that he'd get bored from time to time, and you'd hear this uh, coyote howling, oh, you know, uh, and, and uh, if you look up and here's Allen just uh, uh, wailing at the moon. Allen was a tough person to get to know, and I don't know why. Allen and I got along very well. Uh, some of the people didn't get along with him very well. <coughs> Page shunned long-standing football rituals and kept to himself, irritating the team's veterans. And on the practice field, it was also evident that Allen was different from other rookies the Vikings had known. Meredith throws a low, flat pass, and we get our hands up, I think we're going to be all right. We can knock some of those down. It seemed like he caught on to all the plays, and, you know, he just had... Looked like he had played a few years before, but uh, he hadn't, naturally, but he just stepped right in and took over. By his fourth game, Page was the starting right defensive tackle, a position he would play without absence for the next dozen years. And he was almost unblockable. He was a target that the offensive lineman would look at, and by the time they got, got to where they had to hit him, uh, he was no longer there. You never could pinpoint the guy. It's like, it was like trying to block a ball bearing because he was so slippery and so you know, hard to read. He was so quick, his feet were so quick. He was like a ballet dancer down there on the field. You'd be flat on your stomach and he'd be tackling the ball player and you'd be embarrassed as heck. Learning what to do was not as difficult as doing it. My view of the world was from the snap of the ball, the goal was to shut the play off. And the sooner you get there, the better and it didn't have to be particularly spectacular. Many of his plays were spectacular, but not nearly so astonishing as his ability to anticipate calls even before the ball was snapped. And his instincts were always good. I mean, you'd say, well, you know, players guess. Well, I don't think Allen guessed as much as his instincts told him this is where to be. Allen had the freedom to line up any place he wanted to and to do anything he wanted to do. You know, if Allen saw something, he was allowed to go exploit that. We played the Detroit Lions in a snowstorm. He tipped a ball and I caught it. Someone came in to tackle me and I never even looked. I knew where he was and I laddled the ball and he was right there and he caught it and he scores. That trust extended away from the playing field as the once withdrawn page began to form friendships while allowing his enthusiasm and good-natured humor to surface. Beautiful thing, baby. I got me one, Jim. I, I know it. I saw it. I saw it. I saw it. I'm, this, is, this is movie starring Alan Page and a, coast, and a host of other stars. <laughs> we took over your picture, Jim. Yep. We moved you out. By his second season, Allen and the Vikings had moved out the Green Bay Packers to take over as Central Division champions. A year later, Minnesota posted the league's best record, then won the first playoff game in franchise history, thanks to a late defensive stand led by Page. We were ahead late in the game, but the Rams, they had a pretty good passing attack. Allen had been blocked, and uh, when Gabriel went to throw, he kind of backed up and jumped hit him in the chest, bounced off, he caught the ball, and ran down to the goal line area, and uh, we won the ball game. It was the first of many instances where a single play by Page altered the course of a crucial game. Hey, you did it for us today, Al. You knew, it's way to go. Hey, look here. For me, the game was about the performance. It wasn't necessarily about winning and losing, although I will admit, I'm probably one of the worst losers that there ever was. There were some times when he went off and he would get verbal or he'd have a temper tantrum. Years before his legal career, Page would plead his case whenever he saw injustice, such as the day he was whistled for three offside calls against the Lions. 
He was one of the few linemen in those years who was capable of turning a game around himself. And as a matter of fact, did that in a couple of games, one memorable one against Detroit. He was furious at the officials for calling him for his, and he took it out on the Lions. And I think three or four consecutive plays, he threw the quarterback for a loss, then forced a fumble, which they recovered. He was all over the field. He was uncontainable. I think the best performance I've ever seen by a defensive lineman. So dominant was Page that day, and throughout the entire 1971 season, that the nation's football writers awarded Allen an unprecedented honor. A defensive lineman, most valuable player in the National Football League, hey, that's beyond my fondest dreams. And uh, when he was awarded the most valuable player, I thought, boy, this is so deserving, so deserving. Just playing next to him, he was always great. But at a moment when he stood at the summit of football success, Alan Page was reminded that no award could shield him from the sting of racial bigotry. On a chilly Ohio morning, Alan's father, sister, and brother fell victim to prejudice merely for sending back the wrong breakfast order at a Canton diner. Waitress just got nervous, started crying, called the police, said we were in there causing trouble. Police came, and then as soon as the police walked in the door, said these people wouldn't pay for their meal. And then my father got involved with the policeman. We went outside, and there were like 30 police cars out there, police all around. The Page family was arrested, sent to the city jail, and remained behind bars until the mayor of Canton himself dispatched an assistant to post bail. Overt discrimination, there are varying ways to deal with it. Some people lash out, some people try to hide from it. When it rears its ugly head, the one thing that you have to do is, in some manner, uh, stand up against it. 1971, I believe it was, uh, it was actually an award that the Stark County, which is the county that Canton is located in, they were uh, honoring him as Stark County Athlete of the Year and had invited him to come to a banquet. He wrote back a very sincere thank you letter, but declined the invitation because he was very you know, upset by the incident. And while he blamed no one from the uh, committee that actually was honoring him, he said that he felt it would be improper for him to return to Canton uh, to pretend like nothing had happened to his family when in fact he was very much hurt by it. More than ever, Page was conscious of the harsh world beyond the football field and the challenges he was certain to face there. 